I want to quickly show you a trailer for an upcoming PSVR 2 game called Firewall Ultra. Obviously, this is going to be the first time I'm going to be covering PSVR 2 content on my channel, um, so I'm hoping I don't go too off the rails. Um, but before we get into it, if you do like the video, please consider giving this a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Let's get into it. Raven here. You want to be a contractor? According to your reputation, you have the right skills for the job. If you're interested, the risk is high, but so is the reward. We have multiple contracts, from solo intel gathering to team strike force operations. Locations are hot, and you were never there. If you're compromised, you're on your own. Are you ready? Now this trailer doesn't give many details on the game as a whole, and for those of you who don't know anything about the Firewall franchise, this is basically a sequel to an existing game called Firewall Zero Hour. So a little bit of a disclaimer, I do not actually have any footage of Firewall Zero Hour myself, and that is because my PSVR headset died and I just can't record the footage. So I'm using a recent video that First Contact Entertainment uploaded to their YouTube channel, which is basically where their team of developers plays against the community. And unfortunately, uh, that means that there's gonna be a lot of compression taking place, which is gonna make the footage look a little bit muddy. Firewall Zero Hour is probably the most unique, intuitive, and best looking multiplayer tactical first person shooters in the VR gaming medium. It often gets comparisons to Rainbow Six Siege and how you have what are effectively called contractors, which are characters in game that have skills attached to them. You can use gadgets to clutch out rounds when it comes to those clutch or kick situations. It has a super in-depth weapon customization system through attachments, weapon skins and charms, character customization via the medium of player skins and patches. The maps look beautiful, really detailed environments that are both beautiful and functional whilst also being very unique in their design. It has single player and co-op modes and it's basically got everything that every VR first person shooter gamer wants. And you might be thinking to yourself, damn Yorick, why have I never heard of this game? And that's really quite easy to answer. It was a PSVR 1 exclusive. Now, I'm not really going to go too in-depth into platform exclusive titles, but what I will say is I don't really care about it for regular pancake games, as when you take into consideration the number of console units sold, it starts to make sense why some studios may want to do that. If we take the PlayStation 4 for example, around 117 million units were sold in its life cycle. However, when it comes to the VR side of things, only 5 million units were sold worldwide for the PSVR, making around 5% of all PS4 owners a PSVR user. When you look at VR as a whole, only roughly 26 million VR headsets are in circulation, and of those, 5 million are the PSVR, which isn't an insignificant amount, we're talking around 20% market share in the VR space. However, 15 million VR headsets are the Quest 2, which is a massive 57%, and the rest of, you know, PC VR and other augmented reality devices such as the Samsung Gear. And we all know that you can link your Quest 2 up to a PC to play PC VR content. So Sony, by locking off such a large portion of the market through exclusivity, is just making a bad business move in my opinion. However, that's all I'm going to really say on the subject. Going back to the original game, Firewall Zero Hour was plagued by the typical limitations of the PSVR. Notably that it used visible light as its means of tracking, it didn't have individual hand controllers bar the PlayStation Move controllers which were just not very good. So First Contact Entertainment, the developers of Firewall, opted to use the DualShock controller or the PS Aim controller which is something I'll talk about later. This meant that you couldn't do manual reloads or generally any form of interaction with stuff in the environment. But that being said, this was kind of just the limitation of 
first generation VR headsets as a whole, the CV1 had the same issue. However, with the CV1 and other PC VR headsets, you could just buy more sensors and dot them about your room in order to gain that 360 degree tracking, which was just not something that was possible with the PlayStation VR headset. However, with it now being confirmed that the PlayStation VR 2 will have full six degrees of freedom movement, independent hand controllers and inside out tracking, all these issues that plagued the original headset will die with the original headset. But this does also mean one thing. The developer should be able to more easily port the game across to other systems. The original firewall really couldn't be ported, as for the points mentioned above, they would have had to totally redesign the entire game. So something like crossplay just wouldn't have really been possible. If the developers were able to pull it off, it would have likely meant that there would have been two separate versions of the game, as crossplay really wouldn't have been possible if you've got people who are able to do all the manual reloads and be able to move their hands independently and a group of people who literally only have one user input device. And frankly, crossplay is really important to VR as it's still a very small gaming community. So getting as many of those players into lobbies as possible to play with each other is quite an important aspect of any multiplayer game in VR. So I can just understand why it never really happened for the original game. However, I want to backtrack a little bit to what I was going over before I started talking about exclusivity. Like I said, the game is really unique in how it plays. I was really fond of the gadget system and the customization, but the maps were just sublime in their visuals and design. Can you imagine if a VR game like this released on the PC and it was a multiplayer tactical first person shooter? We wouldn't have to settle for games like Onward with its janky animations or its subpar networking solution ripped straight from the mid noughties or Veil, vale, which is a pretty uninspired game, frankly. It only really has an audience because it's being pegged by the biggest names in the VR community, and it has a $35,000 prize pool attached to an eSports league despite the fact the game's still theoretically in closed beta. Or Pavlov, which is basically just a blatant rip-off of Counter-Strike and just relies on other people, its, its community, to make the content for it. The only real unique multiplayer shooter we have in VR is Contractors. However, even that is spiralling down the bowl and following in Pavlov's footsteps by basically relying on user-generated content to maintain a consistent audience. Now, I am being overly critical here, and that's just because I want to see more, I want to see studios releasing high quality VR games, and Sony has the perfect opportunity to achieve that. They create the only console that has a VR solution, and they have the studios to create the games. However, they like to lock all of this potential into their own ecosystem, which just makes me a little angry. I genuinely believe that this is actually preventing the VR ecosystem from growing because the studios that are capable of making VR games are just making them for the PlayStation VR console. Going back to the upcoming game, because I feel like I keep going off track, uh, it has been confirmed in a recent blog post on First Contact Entertainment's website that the game will have stuff like dedicated servers, something that I think we can all agree is a great step forwards. It will have multiple rounds because the original game only had single rounds per match, uh, new PvE content, returning maps and contractors, along with new locations and contractors, a more in-depth customization system for the weapons and contractors most likely. They also confirmed their continued support for the game which will likely fall into the system of uh, 12 week seasons which will fall in line with their original game and it will most likely be giving you the new operators and new maps and just new weapons and stuff like that new customization options because that's effectively what they did with the original game and if it is any consolation and um, they're basically supporting the original game now, even after four years. Um, I believe they recently just dropped a new season that uh, people are playing through. So it just goes to show that they do have continued support and they don't just let the game die. So I am really excited to see what happens. And you know, at the end of the day, I will likely buy a PS5 and a PSVR to just play this game if it is an exclusive because I miss the original game. But at the end of the day, my old PSVR headset died and I just never bought another one and I ended up just transitioning to PC VR. I put literally hundreds of hours into it. 
over the course of two and a half years. So maybe that can explain why I'm so passionate about the game and why I would like to see them release it to other formats. Because not trying to be funny, this game has the potential to be the competitive shooter for VR as did the original, with the exceptional visuals, the gadget gameplay, and just the general tactics that went into it. I know not everybody is as interested in esports or VR esports as I am. You know, I do compete in the VRML for Onward. So it's just like the first thing that's on my mind. <laughs> it's just that the original game had all the systems built into it from the get-go. You know, you're talking ranking systems, you're talking leaderboards, you're talking all the stuff that is missing from our current pool of VR shooters. I will say hand on heart that none of our shooters that we have on the PC or on the Quest Native are able to meet the same kind of level of firstly just fidelity and polish that the original game had or the competitive potential that the old game had. Firewall Zero Hour had its issues, you know, the, the game's time to kill was huge. It felt like you physically aged in the time it took you to take down another player. And certain skills that the contractors had just increased that further. The game used a peer-to-peer -peer networking system similar to Onward. Uh, but they also didn't have host migration, so if the original host just left because he got mad because he was dying, it just meant that the entire lobby got kicked, which is thankfully being resolved by the dedicated servers of the new game. I'm also hoping that they do reduce the time to kill in order to make the game a little bit more fast paced. But it was the lighting system and the textures that they used that made the game really stand out to me. You genuinely felt like you were in an office block that's been taken over by a terrorist organization or a secret laboratory. Because the maps had so much clutter in them, they felt very, very real and it really helped build the immersion. If they were to release the game to PC, uh, maybe after like a timed exclusivity period for the PlayStation 5, I can't think of a single first person VR shooter that is a multiplayer game that has the same type of atmosphere as Firewall Zero Hour. The only game that has released in recent years that even comes close to just like the way the game looked is Red Matter 2 in my opinion. And that's a single player game. I can just imagine this game becoming the poster boy for VR shooters if it released on other platforms. If they did something similar to what they did with, for instance, After the Fall, where they released it on all VR platforms, whether it be the Quest, PC or PlayStation VR, and maintains the ability to have cross-play, it would be such a huge thing. Because the developers of After the Fall made the game look good on PC and also function on the Quest, and work on the PlayStation VR despite all the technical limitations involved and they didn't really inhibit the visual fidelity of the PC version in order to make it compatible with Quest which is what effectively happened with Onward. The only release I can think of right now uh, that is upcoming that's going to meet and exceed the visual fidelity of Firewall Zero Hour is going to be Ghosts of Tabor which some of you know I talk about quite regularly on this channel. This is a release that aims to be cross-play between PC VR, Quest 2 and PSVR 2. And if you've been watching the trailer in the background, the game just looks so good and is the type of game that we've been missing for many years in the VR space. It effectively aims to be Escape from Tarkov in VR, and outside the generic raid template of Escape from Tarkov, it aims to have other game modes as well to keep you engaged and keep you in the game. And with releases like Ghosts of Tabor and Firewall Ultra on the horizon, like how are games like Onward going to maintain their dominance in the esports scene, or games like Veil vale be able to release a game like what they're releasing and still maintain an audience. I actually aim on doing a video on Veil vale in the future, uh, hopefully get it out next week, um, where I go into a bit of a deep dive on the game as a whole and kind of a lot of the BS that surrounds it. But obviously all these comments I'm making about Firewall Ultra being this like amazing game is very reliant on it actually releasing on other platforms which knowing Sony it most likely won't. 
And although it pains me to say, you know, at the end of the day, I understand why Sony do this. And I, you know, they invest a lot of money into these studios in order for them to make them great games for their upcoming tech. And, you know, they want to sell consoles, they want to sell headsets. So locking these studios in makes a lot of sense. But at the same time, I do believe that it's fine for pancake games, but just not so much for VR games because it's just such a small pool of players. The thing is, is that Sony do know their audience. They are the only VR headset manufacturer that actually created a pseudo VR gun stock before it was cool, being the PS aim control. And although now it seems very basic and rudimentary it functioned very well for its time and well i can see sony creating another one yeah it will probably be more akin to a pro tube or a boke vr stock but knowing sony it would have built-in haptics straight from the get-go from my understanding they've already integrated haptic feedback into the faceplate of the psvr2 and the reactive triggers of the controllers and you know just the general haptic stuff they've been doing with the ps5 overall and it will come with that typical sony build quality that we've come to know and expect but anyway that's going to be it for me today i hope you enjoyed the video ciao